Hey, friend, Chris Van Viver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I wanna demonstrate to you 15 different easy and helpful modifier mouse key commands that you can use right now to fly even faster through Logic than you were previously. Now, what do I mean by modifier mouse key commands? Well, if we just keep the four modifier keys in our minds, shift, control, option, and or command, if we hold one or a combination of these keys while clicking around in Logic with our mouse, Logic will perform various helpful functions that are just so helpful to our workflow. Now, some of these modifier mouse key commands we've covered in previous videos in the series, but most of these we have not. First things first, I have one of the starter grids in Logic loaded up. This is the Solaris grid. If we open the live loop section, you can see it, but I've just populated the tracks area to make it a little faster and easier. Number one in our list, is making group selections in Logic. And that boils down to holding Shift while clicking around in Logic. For example, if I select the Solaris drum kit and then hold Shift and then click the Midnight Fuzz track, we make a selection of all these tracks. And this is very helpful if you want to move an entire selection of tracks around in your project or affect them. So in this case, I'm gonna click and drag these tracks around my project. And we can move the entire selection. Similarly, in the mixer, if I select this first track, hold shift, and then click four down, we make a selection. And now I can adjust the fader, the panning relative to each other, the send levels relative to each other, which is so helpful. We can't move channel strips within the mixer at this moment in time, but it's still great to be able to affect multiple channel strips, multiple track headers at the same time. So again, the shift key allows us to make multiple selections in a row. while. When it comes to regions or cells, the shift key changes a little where we're able to click and then hold shift and you can click multiple regions that are not directly next to each other. Whereas if I held the command tool, I would have my command click tool, which leads into number two. Number two, you can make multiple selections of track headers and of channel strips by holding command. And what's beneficial about holding command is that we can select hold command and we can select tracks that are nowhere near each other to now impact or affect. And if we open the mixer, we can see that the same tracks are selected. Once again, if I hold command, click around, we can select multiple channel strips. So now we can affect their faders or their panning or whatever the case may be all together or change the names of these tracks or channel strips in one go. Number three in our list and one of my favorite key commands is holding shift and clicking a send field which Logic will highlight the associated auxiliary channel strip so we know what channel strip is associated with which send. But one step better, if you have a pretty big project with a lot of tracks, so in this case, I'm gonna select everything and then hold option. This is another one. Hold option, click and drag to copy these tracks over. So now if we open the mixer, maybe I don't know where bus one or bus two is. So if I hold shift and click on bus one, we're brought to that auxiliary channel strip, it'll be the rightmost channel strip, which is highlighted so we know exactly where it is. Additionally, if we open the inspector, and right here we can see the channel strip that's selected and the output. If we hold shift and click the send, now our reverb is the second channel strip in focus in the inspector. Hold shift again and click, now it's our delay. Hold shift, click the output, now the output is in focus. And like I mentioned earlier, if you hold option, click and drag just about anything in Logic, you can copy and paste either a track or a region or a plugin. So once again, if I hold option, click and drag this hi-hat track, we've copied it. We zoom in. If I hold option, click and drag this region, we copy and paste it. And we can do the same with marquee selection. So if you make a selection, hold option, click and drag, we've now copied this section of the region, pasted it elsewhere in the timeline, and we didn't have to split this region from the original region. It preserved the original region, which is awesome. And if we go into the mixer here, just hold option, click and drag, you can copy and paste a plugin. Same thing could be applied in the piano roll. So if we just open the piano roll here, option, click and drag, we've created new notes. Same thing in the live loop section, et cetera. Some other awesome things about option clicking is if we option click any fader, pan knob, plugin parameter, we can reset it back to its default. So if I option click the pan knob, returns. If we go into the fat effects here, option click, it returns to zero. 
We can also option click on a stereo track or a mono track to reveal a plugin that can be routed in the opposite direction. So what I mean by that is, in this case, we have a stereo track. If I option click, I now have the option to place a mono instance of Fat Effects right here. And this applies to any plugin, third party or logic. If we change this channel strip to a mono channel strip, and let's just option click right before everything. Now we can place Fat Effects in stereo, even though it's a mono channel strip. Additionally, if you option click, you reveal the legacy plugin section, which will reveal some old, old plugins that used to be in Logic. If we option click either the EQ thumbnail or the compressor thumbnail, we can place a compressor EQ first in line in the channel strip. So let's now remove the channel EQ, hold option and click, and now we've placed the channel EQ before the compressor. Let's get rid of this channel EQ. If I hold shift and click on the EQ thumbnail, we bring about a linear EQ. And if we hold option and shift and click the EQ thumbnail, the linear EQ is first in the line. What I also love is very often I'll have a ton of plugins in front of me. And it gets to a point where it's like, I, I don't know where everything is. So if you just hold shift and click right in the X here, we're able to close all plugins in one shot. I'm not sure what number we're on anymore, but like I covered in the zoom tool video in this series, if you hold control and option, you get the zoom tool. If your pointer tool is not directly over a region or a note in the piano roll, if you just hold option, you can reveal the zoom tool. But if we hover our mouse over a region, what's going to happen is we're gonna click and drag and copy. So in that case, I just commit to memory control option for zooming. Let's go back to the mixer. Now let's assign every track in this session to a group. So we'll call this group one and we'll call group one all. But I want certain tracks to be part of another group but I don't wanna disassociate them from the group that they're a part of. Well, if we hold shift, click on the group field, group two, we now have one and two for these tracks. So these four tracks are part of group one, but also part of their own group as well. So we'll call this group one, and then let's try it. Shift, click again, group three. Now we have one, two, and three. We'll call this group three. Also, if we go into the tracks area and you know, let's kill some of these just because it's gonna get kind of loud. If you hold shift and click anywhere that's an empty area in the tracks area, the playhead will follow your pointer tool. If we double click while holding shift, we start playback. And the last one that I have for you, let's travel to the piano roll. So I'm gonna make this selection, press P to open the piano roll. Now check this out. If we change our command click tool to the brush tool. So when I hold command, I have the brush tool. If you click anywhere, and let's actually turn off playback so we don't have to hear the different notes. Click and then tap shift. Now we start introducing notes. And when I move my mouse up and down, we're locked to that particular note in the piano roll. So we're not gonna accidentally start drawing notes all over the place. But also, I'm gonna have my command click tool, create a note, and then hold shift to adjust the velocity of these different notes as I'm writing them. So I'm not even sure if that was 15 or even more, but these are the awesome modifier mouse key commands that you can use all over Logic, whether it's the live loop section, whether it's the main tracks, the piano roll, and it's just so much faster than diving into menus or anything else. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, for subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow in the series.